Training young gibbons is mum's job. Down below, Dad Alvin is watching the process from a safe distance. Eco is now reaching the age where he must start branching out on his own. The next stage for Eco now will be kind of trying to get a little bit of independence and exploring his enclosure a little bit further away from Mum. So that's kind of a big deal for a little baby gibbon. It's a nerve-wracking process for the keepers. It'll be one little hand that will maybe hang on to a, a branch or something, but still be on Mum. He'll still go back to Mum if he's nervous, if he perceives anything as a threat. Um, he's still very much kind of clinging on to Mum. It's the same as anybody, any person growing up or anybody learning a, a, a new skill. Where's little one? Keepers are hoping Eco's natural instincts will kick in. If you get a given that's afraid of heights, it's probably not going to last that long, to be honest. But you always hope that he's going to learn and, and do things the way he should do. In the gibbon habitat, Mum Tilu is encouraging baby Eco to let go. They don't push them too hard, but they've really got to get on with it quite quickly. In the wild, if you're not learning to move on your own and um, eating on your own, then there's not much hope for you. That'll slowly progress to being off mum a little bit further and then a little bit further again. And as little Eco starts to become more independent, then he'll start stretching his boundaries a little bit and, and trying to act a bit more like a gibbon. It seems like Eco is overcoming his fear of heights. And it's Dad Alvin who's finally pitching in. Never really saw Eco and his dad interacting that much, but now he's swinging over to him and slapping him in the head. Now he's getting his confidence up, he's, he's a little bit cheeky. You can see him swinging by one arm and just hanging from things. It's just a natural progression for him just to get stronger each day and more confident in what he can do. But as his confidence grows, so does the risk of something going wrong. Tilu's always got an eye on exactly how far he's pushing it, where he is. But obviously, you know, falling is a possibility. Being people, we relate everything back to us. So you know that if you've got a small child, that they, they're possibly going to fall over, they're possibly going to hurt themselves. So it's the same with animals. You're watching them and you're hoping nothing's going to happen. But that's the only way they're going to learn, is by doing things themselves. You've just got to let them get on with it. In the Silvery Gibbon House, Eco's climbing lessons with Dad Alvin have run into a problem. He's bashed his chin on something and, and grazed it. It's just a knock that you get, like you get your toddler that'll trip over and bang its head, and have a cry about it for a few seconds and then, and then move on, hopefully. Like any youngster, after a bump, Eco turns to his mum, Tilu. Dad Alvin has been relieved of his duties. Tilu's really quite delicate and caring, given she's the one that's looked after Eco the most. Primates especially have always got a really protective instinct over their youngsters. To make sure Eco's grazed chin is nothing more serious, Come on. Mark decides to take a look. Hi, sweetie. Hey, buddy. How is your chin? OK, all right. Do you want some of that? No, Mum's having it. Like all our animals, we just watch it every day, um, keep an eye on it, check he's all right, and, and see that it's healing properly. Eco, let me see that chin. It's just part of it, growing up for anyone, really, animals or children. Eco, look this way. You may bang yourself, trip up, but you, you get back up and uh, brush it off. What have you been up to? What have you been up to? 
a little bit sore, but not too bad. But hopefully it won't hold him back at all. And he seems quite confident again. He's off swinging around. Um, so it's just something that we'll monitor, really.